This absolute behemoth is a 20 year old Sun Unix workstation. And believe it or not, this is also the oldest possible PC that can run Windows 11, theoretically. So today, join me as we do the most unthinkable and unforgivable Windows install ever. So stay tuned. And if you consider yourself an e-waste connoisseur, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So Windows 10 is set to reach end of life on October 14th, 2025, which means the end of the road for 32-bit CPU support in modern Windows. Windows 11 is 64 bits only. Well, the Sun Ultra 40 workstation was the first PC to use the AMD Opteron CPU, which itself was the very first x86 64-bit CPU, which makes this thing the oldest possible computer that can support Windows 11. But I say theoretically because there's some debate online as to whether this is possible. Some people have already tried this and it didn't work. I mean, the stock Windows 11 installer won't even attempt to install on this thing because these Opteron CPUs aren't on the officially supported list. That's easy enough to bypass though. More difficult is that some of these old Opteron CPUs don't support a critical CPU instruction that Windows 11 needs, pop count. That's why we're going to install a specialized distro of Windows 11 called Tiny11, which not only strips out a lot of the Windows 11 cruft, but it's based on Windows 11 version 23H2, which should work because it doesn't need that pop count instruction. We'll talk more about what Tiny11 is once we start the install. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a one-stop solution for all of your PCB assembling and fabrication needs. Do you need to prototype something? Build a run of a project? I bet PCBWay can handle the whole thing, the whole way through. PCB prototyping starts at just $5 for 10 pieces with as little as a 24-hour turnaround. And boy, do they offer a lot of different options. Flex PCB, Rigid Flex, HDI PCBs. They even offer PCB assembly, through-hole and surface mount, which starts at just $29 for one to 20 pieces. The low pricing and ease of ordering has made PCBWay the preferred vendor for many in the retro community for many years. Many of the projects that supercharge our vintage machines with modern components just wouldn't be possible without the kinds of services that PCBWay offers, from prototyping to mass production. So I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. So instead of burning a physical DVD, I'm going to use one of my favorite little devices here, the IOD, which is an optical disk drive emulator. I have Arch Power Tiny 11 and Ubuntu 2504 ISOs on here, and the computer that you plug this into thinks that this is a USB CD-ROM drive, and it should boot off of this just fine. Now I am going to switch up the storage a little bit. I'm going to install this M.2 SSD, which is one terabyte. I don't know if we can boot from that or not. So I'm also leaving in our 240 gigabyte standard SATA SSD, and we'll see what the Windows installer says. I'm also going to leave in our four gigabyte NVIDIA Quadro K2200 graphics card. Although the computer is from 2005, this card actually came out in 2014. I'm also going to chuck in this nice little unbranded USB 3 and Type C card. Yep. There is just something so wonderful and cursed about this setup. We have the 20 year old Unix workstation and accompanying monitor, the original Sun keyboard with keys in weird positions. Let's look at where the control key is. And of course, the Tasty Cake mouse. All right, let's power this behemoth up. Loading into the boot menu. Oh, and there it is, USB CD-ROM, IOD virtual CD-ROM. That's this thing, all right. Will you boot the Windows installer? Oh no! All right, well, let's start eliminating things. I took out the no-name USB 3 card. Oh yeah, there it goes. All right. Okay, so apparently it doesn't even see that other drive I put in there. So I guess let's try a different drive. This is an M.2 500 gigabyte, a WD Black. These things are bulletproof. Oh yeah, it sees it, look at that. Seems like there is something on it already, which we will just erase. Oh yeah, Windows can't be installed on the M.2 that's in the PCIe slot. I was afraid of that, so we'll install to the SATA SSD and use the M.2 for our Steam library. 
So while this installs, apparently without any issue, a little bit of background on what Tiny11 is. It's put together by NT Dev, and it's basically just a stripped down version of Windows 11 without a lot of the Microsoft Cruftware installed, and the checks for system requirements removed. So no check for minimum RAM, no check for CPU. If the system can run it, it will run it. This, of course, is a slightly older version of Windows 11. NTDev now provides a Tiny11 builder script system on their GitHub that allows you to build your own version of Tiny11 to install on your machine. And I will definitely link this down in the description below, though if you want to find this older version that apparently can run on literally anything with x86 64 bits, well, that's up on the Internet Archive. Ah, uh, look at that! Getting ready. Holy smokes. Strong and secure password. Definitely not just the word action. That would be insecure. Diagnostic data. <laughs> Imagine someone at Microsoft getting diagnostic data from a 20 year old son workstation. Holy smokes. It worked. Look at this. We have rebooted into Windows 11. Hi. Oh my God, we're in. This is a 20 year old computer. The first x86-64 CPU. And it's running Windows 11. Two processors, 2.8 gigahertz, eight gigs of RAM. All right, well, obviously the first thing we need to do is get rid of Microsoft Edge. This is too many questions, Microsoft. The only thing Edge is good for is going to firefox.com. Guess we need to format the M.2 drive. I was gonna call it Steam. All right, let's download some games. The Long Dark, a little bit of a lighter game. And then I also want to download frickin' Oblivion Remastered because this computer came out in 2005. Oblivion, the original Oblivion, came out in 2006. This computer is older than the original Oblivion. So if it can play Oblivion Remastered, <laughs> there's just something poetic about that. Either that or there's something wrong with me. Okay, while Steam downloads those games, let's check out YouTube. Good old Mac84. I just had a cameo in one of his latest videos. Look, that's freaking working. This is 720. That's playing just fine. And that is extra wild because YouTube itself came out in 2005. This computer is as old as YouTube. And here it is playing the latest modern version of YouTube in all of its bloated glory. All right, where's my cameo in here? Hey, I'm one of them there Borgs. I'm gonna assimilate you. Must install Linux. Oh, wow, look at this. What the heck? It plays perfectly. Look at this. Hello, dear. The frame rate is unbelievable. Buttery smooth 3D gaming on a 20 year old Opteron PC. All right, dare we try Oblivion Remastered. I think this game is much more CPU dependent. All right, well, it did not even try to launch. An AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT with 16 gigs of VRAM, and it's so new it still has the protective covering on it. I mean, this will fit. And just to keep things spicy, we'll be powering the graphics card with a secondary external power supply. Nothing janky about this at all. Okay, I have routed the power supply wires through an empty slot cover so that I could reclose the door for airflow. I've jumpered the external power supply so it will be powered as soon as I plug it in. Is there any universe in which this just works? Let's find out. Ah, uh, she's not happy. All right, let's try a different graphics card and tone things down a bit. This is a 6750 XT with 12 gigs of VRAM. Oh my God, it works. <laughs> oh, no freaking way. This is a graphics card that's like 20 years newer than the computer that we're putting it in. What do I need updates for? All right, well, will this play Oblivion Remastered now? Ah, oh, well, that was anticlimactic. 
I guess let's run AMD's software installer. I'm pretty sure the issue here is not the graphics card, but the CPU. But oh my God, check this out. Atomfall works great. Look at this frame rate. This is like a modern PC's frame rate. Okay, so it's not a perfect frame rate, but this is working great. I could just play this. This is a modern game running on a computer that's 20 years too old for it. Or maybe the Sun Ultra 40 is just 20 years ahead of its time. Okay, so what have we learned here today? Well, for one, obsolete is kind of arbitrary. I cannot believe that this thing runs Windows 11 so well, although the power to performance ratio does leave something to be desired. That's a thousand watt power supply. But I think the more important lesson is that no computer is e-waste if you still have a use for it. And that use can even just be learning something new, experimenting, or just enjoying. I am so glad that Mike saved this thing from winding up in a landfill and that it wound up in the trunk of my car at VCF East. In any event, that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more weird stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And I just wanna give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.